Hey everybody, Fishman here. This was not intended to be my video this week. Uh, it was supposed to be something else, but uh, things have conspired for it to be this. Uh, this is the original water deflector I put on the river tank, and the client liked it. Uh, but it was kind of bulky, so I decided to slim it down and do this, and also to get a little bit more turnover. Well, he thought it was a little loud, but he thought, eh, it looked good. He liked the, he liked the effect. The problem is, with the little additional turnover, <laughs> there's a lot more evaporation out of this tank. And after a week, when it came back, like when it came back this week, after it had been running a week, uh, the water level had dropped sufficiently that it was really too loud for him because he, whenever he had people in for meetings or whatever, it would make too much noise. So, we're going to do version 3 now, I guess. So, what I, if you remember a while back, I had done a video on an air power lift. So I thought, uh, I would have been thinking about doing one for uh, a saltwater tank. And I figure at this point, what I'll do now is I, I went out to buy a... Uh, 1 16th inch bit just to test it out and found out if I bought two 1 16th inch bits I could buy that entire kit instead for uh, I think it was like $12 more so <laughs> and have a lot more drill bits than I was hoping for uh, but I figure the 1 16th should be small enough uh, for me to do this so I'm gonna drill a whole pile of these holes and then we're gonna do uh, the usual fitting for the power lifts but <laughs> Uh, I mean, my, I should have guessed because my week was kind of going this way anyway. Every now and then you get one of these Murphy weeks where everything you do sort of doesn't quite work right. And that's what happened pretty much all uh, Thursday. Uh, first one of these I made, I had really way too loose. I made another, oh, I screwed it up again. Uh, it was just that kind of day. But I eventually did get it to the point where uh, I could get it done properly. So you'll notice that this power lift tube is a lot uh, larger in diameter so I wanted to uh, create a bigger air chamber and I originally started just by putting one hole and one airline tubing through it and I didn't really like the amount of flow it was a little bit more but it was not nearly as much as I wanted so I ended up uh, trying to create uh, more air pressure in there so hence the uh, the second airline tubing now this is not meant as uh, a lift to get things out of the water, like, like lift uh, like for a filter or whatever. I just want a lot of flow across the surface. So this is going to be the tank I'm going to uh, test it out on. And the only reason why I'm showing you this clip is, uh, you know my feelings about duckweed, right? <laughs> and this plant, these these plants are growing really well and whatnot. <laughs> I noticed as I moved it across when I was doing the video, there is a little piece of duckweed. <laughs> Uh, it's just so irritating. So this is with one uh, airline running. It is uh, more flow, but I was not happy with that. That's just, it is not enough. So here we go, I <laughs> moved it up to, those are both flowing now, and this is more like it. This is going to produce uh, a great deal of flow across the surface. I may have to modify the output for it a little bit, uh, but what I want to do is I just want to create that uh, lots of water shooting across the surface and I mean, it's kind of important to get a bit of flow that way and because again it's uh, made out of uh, tubular acrylic uh, it's gonna be nice and unobtrusive in the tank I will do up those airlines so that they're not uh, as visible and then it should do quite well that way what I'm gonna do here in a second is I'm gonna tilt this down towards the plants just to show you uh, how much flow there is but you can see the guppies there trying to fight up against it it's actually uh, uh, turned out to be quite good. So there you go. <laughs> that's actually, considering it's just run by air, that's uh, that's pretty good. It's almost to where I want it to be. I may have to improve this uh, a little bit more again for the saltwater version, but uh, I think it's going to be interesting. So I'm going to show you this bit because I needed to make a bracket. I wanted a bracket that would uh, allow that the <laughs> allow the air tube to uh, always adjust to the whatever uh, water level there was. If the water goes down, I want it to go down with it. That way I wouldn't have that problem of increased noise. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, use this arbor, which I thought was a mistake in the beginning. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I've gotten so much use of it, it's actually kind of impressive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wide note a hole. I want the, these are going to be a bracket for, these are, this is what the tube's going to fit in. So I needed it wide enough so that it can slip through easily and not bind. So you'll notice there's three of them here, but I'm only going to use two. Uh, with the uh, boring bar there, I can't go all the way to the bottom because uh, it would just dig into the metal and cause issues. So I had to put a third one on there just so that I had a buffer for it. And of course, I can't make a video <laughs> with my cat uh, knock showing up every time I do anything anywhere in the fish room. Uh, he's down, comes for a pet, uh, gets his nose in pretty much everything I do. And uh, I don't know, it's good company if nothing else. So he gets his pet here. And then I'm going to take this off the arbor, and uh, we're going to build the final brackets for this. And uh, like I said, it's going to it's, it's going to be a different style of bracket. That's why I wanted to show you this a little bit. So I'm going to take that, like, let's see, it just fits through nicely. Um, and then once that is all off, uh, it's just a matter of when doing those two bolts. And I'll cut that down so that, you know, the only reason why they're this large is I wanted to fit them on the arbor. But once, uh, once they're off, uh, you'll see how easily it slides through. And there's that little bit of flange. That's the reason why the third one's of no use to me. Uh, I suppose I could have made use for it, but it's just uh, there to protect the arbor. <laughs> here, I'm protecting something I thought I would never use. That's just funny. So here we're going to do is we're gonna, this is gonna, how it's going to slide on. This is actually quite uh, a delicate operation. Uh, hence, my hand is in the way. I'm sorry. Uh, but I had to make sure it was perfectly square because if it has a bit of a tilt to it or a twist, it's going to end up uh, binding the pipe and the pipe definitely has to have uh, free float through this so that it does that uh, self-adjusting that I, well, well, I'll show it to you when we actually run this. So that's the first one in. That one, that's the easiest one because it's a square on the end. This is the trickier one because it's like I said, it doesn't have uh, anything I can actually square it off to. What I'm going to do is uh, do it by feel. I'll like uh, here we go. I'll rest my finger on it, and then I'll adjust it until it, it feels like it's uh, sliding through nice and smoothly. And then once that's there, I'll just glue it in place. It's actually uh, it's not hard to do. It just I wanted to make sure it didn't bind because if it does, it is not going to do what I want it to do. So here we go. Nice thing about the holding the pipe and the pipe holds it in place. So as long as you're careful when you do the gluing like this and you don't bump anything, uh, it'll glue and set up really nicely. But part of my Murphy day here that I didn't even notice at this point until I thought ah, this is doing really well. So uh, I didn't peel off the blue paper there, the, the blue, blue uh, plastic film that goes on this. I just glued these pieces onto that. <laughs> the second I stuck this in the tank, uh, it all fell apart. It was really quite funny. Well, in retrospect. So here it is. It's all done. Uh, the bracket's finished. Uh, you can see it slides nice and easily. Uh, there's no real friction involved there, which is perfect because I want it to, like I said, bob up and down and just hover right at the surface of the water. This is a bit loose. I wasn't terribly impressed. With, like I said, I, it should be a lot tighter, but it's more than enough for this particular one. And what I'm going to do is when I put it on the client's tank, uh, I'll probably still do a few more adjustments to it. So there it is. It's all finally finished. We're going to stick it in the tank now. And I'll show you the uh, the bobbing effect, which is really quite cool. It turned out really nice. So if you like the style of video, please like and or subscribe. And let me in the comments <laughs> think of my, what do you think of my Murphy day? <laughs> it's just kind of bizarre. They, every now and then everything just seems to conspire all at one pile just to... This should have taken a couple of hours, ended up taking like better part of a day. It was just, it was just crazy. So here I'm gonna poke my finger on the top of this now. I think shortly. Come on. There we go. And you see how it just bobs right back to the surface. That's what I wanted. So now it's, uh, it's perfect for. It'll always stay near the surface, uh, well, at least until it hits that bracket, which is, well, it's a good two-inch drop, so that should be fine. Anyway, this is uh, this is the Mark III. There may be a four or five, who knows. 
I think this will probably be the last one for a while. It seems to work quite well. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.